Um, okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, a very um, good evening to um, everyone. I'm I'm your host Aparajita, and I'm here to take you um, on another riveting journey through today's gender and sexuality webinar hosted by Anna Jory. Um, um, before we introduce today's speaker and you know, jump right in, uh, Alop um, wanted to tell you about Anna Jory for uh, any new faces in the audience um, who've joined us this evening. Uh, so the word Anna Jory translates to unconditional love. Um, and it is uh, this unconditional bond of love that brought our founder, um, Milin Dotto Sir, back from the United States of America to begin this um, not-for-profit organization in 2018. And um, Ami, um, through Anna Jory, Ami besides you to engage with and uh, promote various endeavors and, and leaders who are striving for social change. Um, through multiple initiatives, um, Ami, uh, ranging from, from animal welfare to LGBTQ plus awareness to entrepreneurial pursuits, um, movie screenings, we hope to encourage all change makers of, of the Northeast, uh, including Ahom. Um, and as in the last few months, I mean, invite Korisu speakers from different fields through virtual media platforms so that I mean, network Akon Monabo Paru of competent, sincere, and um, dedicated individuals who are passionate about uplifting Akhom and, and um, the Northeast. Um, so, um, gonna jump right in and um, introduce our, our speaker for the evening. Um, just quickly, uh, one second. Yes. Um, so uh, we have with us today um, Dr. Suti Goswami, uh, who's an uh, assistant professor of English at the Assam Royal Global University, Guwahati. Um, she she has the head of forty academic uh, and a uh, hundred plus non-academic publications that uh, she has under her name, Khomiyat, uh, and also in English, both original and translated work. Um, Amongst these, um, there are also two published and uh, co-edited anthologies. Uh, one is essentially speaking biographical snapshots, which was uh, published by Guwahati University Press in 2015. Aru, uh, Warp and Weft, Makers of Modern Assam, National Book Trust, um, a published Korese, uh, this um, in 2018. And her areas of interest are, um, Ami, you know, we'll be, you know, sort of talking about today. Um, broadly, these are historiography, Cultural studies, translation studies, British Assam, Northeast or Hahito literature of the Northeast uh, India, and English studies. Um, and uh, before we, you know, plunge into the topic of today's session, which is exploring gender and sexuality in Jyoti Prakha Dagarwala space, I would want to, you know, um, let uh, our audience know a little bit more about you informally, you know, your hobbies, your interests, the ma'am, and, you know, just getting to know you a little bit better. All right. Uh, thank you, Prajita, and thank you, Anajori. Uh, in fact, I did attend one of a few of the uh, initial uh, webinars or sessions that Anajori had organized, and they were always very interesting. So it's fun for me also to be a part of it now. Uh, so as far as my interests are concerned, um, reading, reading, writing, I guess, uh, and uh, along with this music. So uh, I am yeah. trained uh, in uh, Bharat Khande School of Music. And before that, actually, I also took, uh, I have a degree from Prachin Kala Kendra, Chandigarh, in vocal class, vocal uh, classical. So, uh, uh, so I do not really sing, sing per se, but yes, uh, music is my other area of interest, if you want, if you know. Wow. And hobbies, well, I... I guess if, if collecting pens is said to be a hobby, then that is my hobby. So, <laughs> pens, like from uh, limited edition pens to the interesting, you know, the ones that we get in 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 the traffic points sometimes. So yeah. all kinds of pens. So yeah, so I guess that is my only hobby. Unlike uh, very nice sounding ones like philately and stuff. So no, mine is just collecting pens. <laughs> No, I mean, pen collection, coin collection, it's, yeah, it's yeah. same level. Yes, I also have, uh, yeah, I, um, I say more about coin collection, man, hobby no holo. I go is by chance, somehow I chanced upon some very interesting uh, copper and, you know, such coins from the pre-colonial times and the colonial times that I got when my grandmother passed away. So 
like so accidentally hope i have a small collection of coins also coins. yeah <laughs> yeah that's all Thanks, coins. Um, yeah. Uh, so moving on. So this is something that I think you know our audience would love to you know remember you by, uh, right? Uh, the the nitty gritties, the informal details, and so forth. Um, yeah. But uh, like, <laughs> and and the uh, yeah the attention drawing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if I may have a half a minute, you know, Prajita, like. Um, Uh, in my workplace sometimes it happens that uh, my students have often especially after covid we are we were in masks for a long time so sometimes it happened that if i was not wearing this my own students didn't recognize me because i was also in a mask they would pass by and then later on they would be like oh it was you ma'am so <laughs> what a marker of recognition <laughs> yeah i mean see so vital slip disk is something that doesn't go away easily so this has been going on for a while so anyways that that's beyond the purview of our discussion today such a, like it's... but it's interesting um and we do want to you know get to interesting things you know it's a long session and we want our audience to oh. be very involved um but today's session uh, you know as i said briefly is exploring gender and sexuality in um, rupkor jyoti prakash agarwala's place and um, you know before um So actually, let's uh, get into it, and I would want you to perhaps give us a broad overview of, you know, how you have explored these plays, and you know, um, how you would situate your body of work therein. Okay. Uh, uh, firstly, of course. Uh, see, when uh, and this is something I personally really believe in. When we are reading a text. it could be any text of any genre when we are reading a text there are two distinct perspectives uh, from which we do read a text first is of course the perspective uh, from which uh, you know the, the, our what i shall call our spatial and temporal locations from which we read a text and the other is of also the uh, the fact that a particular text is written in particular time frames in particular spatial frames right. and directly indirectly consciously or unconsciously the creation of those texts are influenced by right. these various what we shall call social cultural historical political matrices and especially when we look at a playwright like jyoti prakash agarwala and not only a playwright uh, although we'll be focusing on that but as as a as a a man who was uh, socially culturally politically very very aware of what was going on not simply in in ahom but or nationally but also what was going on uh, uh, in 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 europe at the time because also because i think this is something we all know now uh, know that uh, chuti prakash did spend some time in europe uh, uh, because he did take admission Uh, uh and he he you know he sailed the seas and all but uh, and uh and um, so when we look at a playwright like jyoti prakash agarwala and when we look at his plays uh, one aspect that really fascinates is how he has uh presented uh his female characters mm-hmm. and uh of all the plays that he has written literally all his major plays uh are are titled after on female yeah. or titled after female characters mm-hmm. and so they are at the protagonists as well and so and yet another interesting thing that we find is how this depiction of female characters is varied in his plays so if we look at his i'm just giving a uh, to set off this conversation i'm just giving an example like when we look at a play like um say karing or ligiri mm-hmm. or or uh, or a play like rupalim for example that yes. was written in the in the in the 30s and we also have to remember that around the 30s the 20s and 30s uh, and as he was growing up juti prahad agarwala was greatly influenced by gandhian ideologies mahatma gandhi's ideologies because then again we also cannot overlook or forget the fact that the national the freedom movement was going on at the time yeah. and uh, and juti prahad's family himself was quite involved in various ways with with uh, not simply freedom movement but also with the nation building exercises that were going on at the time so when we look at uh, 
at Juti Prakhar Agarwala and and keeping in mind, keeping in view the fact that he was into, uh, influenced by Gandhian ideologies and uh, one aspect of Mahatma Gandhi's um, drive for freedom or his the, the movement for freedom that Mahatma Gandhi uh, uh, led was uh, resistance and that was non-violent resistance. Yes. Uh, uh, Passive resistance, also what uh, is sometimes what is often used, the term that is used, and in a play like Rupalin, for example, where the protagonist is Rupalin, there what we see is pass essentially passive resistance by the protagonist, uh, because uh, in the play. So just to give a small maybe background of the play, so uh, Rupalin uh, Rupalin is uh, uh, is a young maiden from an imaginary community that is uh, the Rupmi community. And uh, Rupalim at the beginning of the play is shown to be, she lives with her grandfather and and uh, and she is shown to be in love with a young youth of her community, very happily in love. And then one fine day, uh, uh, the prince uh, or the powerful prince of the neighboring kingdom, Moni Mukta, he passes through uh, you know, where Rupalim lives and he sees her. And when he sees her, uh, his is mesmerized by her beauty, and he forcibly has her carried away to his kingdom, and he keeps uh, her a prisoner in his palace, and 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 so that is, uh, and and uh, it is also interesting and ironical that when Monimukta is passing by, you no, know, the village where Rupalim lives, he is actually returning from the Rupi capital after having secured a uh, 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 the. Uh, hand of the Rukmi princes in for marriage. So it is it is that kind of, of uh, context against which uh, the 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 we see Monimukta, we see the character of Rupalim. And all in the later part of the play, act two onwards uh, in the play, what we find is how Rupalim consistently refuses Monimukta's advances. So there are uh, lengthy passages, there are twice or thrice in the play, and all of these in information are in the stage direction. They're twice or thrice in the play, Rupalim, where Moni Mukta advances towards Rupalim, and she keeps on saying, I want to go back to Mayabo, who is her lover. I want to return to my grandfather. Please let me go. She keeps on saying that, and and eventually uh, at the end, by uh, by the final act of the play, we see that Moni Mukta has a change of heart. So she he does not really... Um, uh, let's say, touch her uh, physically. He does not really, uh, and he lets her go. But the point that I want to come back to is this passive resistance. And this is very, very um, Gandhian in, in, in this in the sense that the, this whole, so this is what we see in a play like Rupalin. Okay, this passive resistance. And this is a play that, although it was published uh, later on, it was a play that was uh, uh, written uh, in the 1930s. Uh, so that is what Rupalim is. How, but so what we have to remember here or note here is that for Rupalim, passive resistance is a choice that she exercises out of her circumstances. So so that is what Rupalim says. So it is a it is a choice amidst or in the middle of all these social circumstances, or not social, not only social, all the circumstances she finds herself in. However, when we come to the 1940s uh, and uh, uh, Juti Prahad's last major play, although he did write a play after, you know, uh, after Lobhita, Lobhita is his last major play, and, and, uh, and, uh, and last finished play also, because at the time of his passing away, uh, Jit Prahad had was writing uh, a play that was that remained unfinished. So in Lopita again, the female protagonist, I mean, uh, Jit Prahad does not call her protagonist, but she is the major character in the play. Uh, she exercises the choice of assertion. So she is a character who is has an assertive voice. Mm -hmm. She is a young woman who is uh, uh, no not who is capable of challenging the patriarchal conventions of her society. She is a young woman who is not afraid to uh, criticize uh, people in power in her, of course, in her uh, in her certain uh, circumstances or uh, in her milieu. And she's not afraid to do so. And at the end of the play, uh, so she again, Lobhita uh, is a play uh, where 
I mean, Shri Goshi is, is a Gandhi supporter, Gandhian initially, a supporter of Gandhi Mahatma, as she says in the play. But at the end, she becomes a nurse of the International Red Cross. And then she, as, you know, she is caught in the crossfire between the Indian National Army, the Azad Hind Falls, and the uh, British American soldiers. So this is the Second World War, we have to remember. Mm -hmm. So uh, so Lobhita is a play that is sketched, uh, is, is, uh, is located uh, around the time when the Second World War and the Indian, Indian freedom movement, all of these were taking place. Yeah. So what my point here is that, yes, Chutipurhad Agarwala not only titles his play after female characters, but he depicts strong female characters, even in a play like Rupalim, where often there is another female character in Rupalim called Itibhen, who is a princess, the prince, the princess who was supposed to marry Monimugdha. And so uh, she is also a very strong character. We'll come to that in uh, maybe our later discussion. But what I'm trying to point here is that the female characters are shown to exercise their choice. Okay, yes. and even in a play. Karing or Ligiri, you know, Karing or Ligiri, even in a play like Karing or Ligiri, what we see is at the end, the the Karing or Ligiri, the, the Ligiri who is heavily the character, she gives up her life. Why? Because the prince, Hundor Kumar, he declares that I'm going to marry this maid. And her choice. Okay. Regardless, yes. I mean, and he decides that I'm going to make, and he and now he declares actually, the Hundor Kumar, who is a prince, he mm -hmm. declares that uh, he is going to make the maid of the palace the princess of the palace. But she's and not interested. Sorry? But she's not interested. No, she's absolutely interested. Okay, now uh, I let me, I think I also need to give a small background of the plays as we go along. Uh, so uh, I guess this is clear, right? So 1930s plays, we see passive resistance in the character of Rupalim. The mm -hmm. protagonist of Rupalim, yes. and that is greatly influenced and inspired by Gandhian ideology. But in 1940s, a play like Lobita that was written is also reflective of Juti Prahad Agarwala's uh, increasing inclination towards socialist ideologies. Or so because he became involved with the IPTA actually, Juti Prahad Agarwala. So that is why we see. Uh, on one hand, we see Congress volunteers who are hypocritical, and then we see in Lobhita, and we see uh, uh, ideal, ideal, idealistic and upright uh, soldiers from the Indian National Army. Mm -hmm. So, so, so this is uh, what you know. So, in the play Lobhita, what we find is the female protagonist again making a choice, but this choice is of and of assertion, not of passive resistance, of active resistance. Mm. So this is what we find. So these shift. are the this is so this shift is something that is interesting. Mm -hmm. And as far as and so uh, the other play uh, is Karengor Ligiri. Yeah. Now Karengor Ligiri is again it was written in the thirties. So we have to understand that uh, Karengor Ligiri and Rupalim they we we will place them uh, their composition in the thirties and Lobhita we will place the composition in the forties nineteen forties. So Karengor Ligiri. Uh, is uh, to give a backdrop, a bit of a background, uh, is a play about the maid of the palace. She's actually the maid who is assigned to um, clean up and keep in order the chamber of the prince. And she is deeply in love with the prince, Hundor Kumar. But he does not, he in fact scoffs at initially in the play. He, say, he uh, almost seems to, uh, tends to ridicule uh, Hewali's affection for him. Not because he is interested in anyone else, but simply because uh, he is an idealistic young man and he has his high, high ideals. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hewali also, this Hewali is the uh, Karing or Ligiri or the chambermaid, or the maid of the prince's chamber. She also does not expect anything in return. So her love, she says it in the play, in the earlier part of the play, she says that my love is like just as we admire the beauty of the moon without expecting anything in return. Sure, that yeah. is how my love is for Kundor. So that is how, 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 that is what her love is for the prince, for Kundor Kumar. That is the earlier part of the play. But eventually, Kundor Kumar also apparently realizes his 
feelings or affections for Hewali. By the time, of course, Hewali, the maiden mate has been banished from the palace and expelled from the palace by the uh, queen mother, the mm. Rajma, the prince's mother. And so even and so that is when in in you know in Acts four five we see where Hundor Kumar, uh, the prince, he de- he actually declares in front of his mother, and he says, "I will make the." And he said it is it's a declaration he makes that I will make the maid of the chamber the princess of the chamber. Okay. Now we have to understand that karengor ligiri is a play that is again the 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 exact teri- the location is not specified but the implication is that this is an ahom uh, culture that is depicted because the terms that are used in the play like uh, the term for the ahom term for no the ahom king was called sorgodeo so now in the play also the term sorgodeo is used or the word rajmau is used so rajmau happens to be the queen mother the month you know the the the, the queen mother, mother. Yes. yes so so given if we um, take a uh, uh, karing or ligiri to be a play that depicts the ahom culture ahom society ahom times then for a prince to claim that he would marry the maid was blasphemous yeah it yeah. could lead to different kinds of uh, political upheavals and hewali this maid is aware of that that is why at the end of the play because she is uh, living in exile in banishment and uh, and hundor kumar he sets out in search of hewali so when she comes to know of that hewali gives up her life she 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 dies actually she so this is a, again this is self sacrifice and again uh, we see even uh, in 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 the uh, non violent movement uh, that that uh, mahatma gandhi pioneered or or uh, not pioneered let's say let's use another word that he led uh, self sacrifice is something that we find if we look at the at the non violent freedom movement of india we find self sacrifice of different kinds at different levels so again so what i'm trying to drive home is that when we talk of and of course when we talk of gender in in jyoti prahad's plays uh, broadly we find male and female characters only uh, uh, again we have to remember it was written in the early part of the 20th century so yeah. male and female characters are what we find but somehow if we look purely at the characterization also what we find is that female characters are more rounded characters we find yeah. greater growth in the female characters compared to the male characters even a character like a uh, hundor gor uh, in karing or ligiri the prince although he does show a change of heart and 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 we see a, a transformation in him yet that arc of evolution is weaker if we compare it to the the kind of evolution and growth that we find in a character like or uh, uh, like um, even hewali for that matter in the play or or lobhita in his other plays so when we talk of gender in jyoti prahad agarwal's plays this is something that we can really we really need to look into and it is very interesting also i feel because this like i have said this is the early 20th century where he was showing uh, the, and okay if i have time i would like to talk about another character uh, actually a prajata in Absolutely. this so um, so so rupalim is a protagonist of rupalim hawali is the protagonist of karing or ligiri after whom the play is titled lobhita is a, is the major is the most important character in lobhita now the reason why i'm saying lobhita is the most important character and not the protagonist is because in the introduction to the play lobhita juti prahar agarwala himself has written that this play does not have any sole protagonist the people of assam are the protagonist of this play so that is why uh, i'm using the term the major character uh there is another uh, female character in uh, in juti prahad agarwal's plays whose name is kanchan okay now kanchan is a character from karing or digiri so she is like the uh, second uh, most important female character in karing or digiri 
in the plea carrying or legally. So, uh, uh, like I have already said, uh, uh, in in uh, in uh, carrying or legally, Hewali, the maid, loves the prince. The prince looks almost looks down on uh, Hewali's affections initially, but he is forced to marry because it is the norm of the time. The land, because yeah. he is the prince, he has to be the king. So he has to marry someone who belongs to one of the uh, eminent families, eminent clans uh, of of the uh, of of the times. And Kanchan Kumari is is the is the lady who is chosen to marry Hundar Kumar. And uh, eventually, Hundar Kumar agrees. The prince he agrees. But now the backstory is that Kanchan. She is in love with the prince's best friend, whose name is Onongoram. Oh, okay. And the Onongo also, Onongoram also loves Kanchan, but he is not the prince of the land. So when, uh, when he learns that a marriage has been fixed the, between Hundor Kaur and Kanchan, he goes to meet Kanchan Kori and Kanchan, uh, Kanchan, this character, she asks Onongoram the person who loves her and she loves, if he is willing to stand up against society. But Kanchan herself says that as a girl, as a woman, it is not possible for her to stand against her parents' decisions. Mm -hmm. So she gets married eventually to uh, prince. Hundor Kuan, the prince. But after the marriage, she tells her husband that she was in love with his friend. And so she can, even if she gives her body to the prince. She can never give the, right. the prince a place in her heart. Right. Again, you see a, a female character asserting. And we have to also understand uh, essentially plays are texts that are written to be performed. So, mm. so we have uh, these characters and this is, and in each of these that I have talked about, we see how these characters are exercising their choices in their own ways. And yep. uh, and so, so anyway, so this is uh, so this is about yes. No, but these are these are absolutely fascinating insights, and how you know um, that was also going to be my uh, my next uh, you know pointer or question, however you may see it. You know the way that he you know depicts female characters, which is so so you know unique and fresh considering the era the time the background and you know that kind of you know coincides with the emergence of the new woman in the west and uh, you know when we talked about it yesterday you talked about how that influence and even now when you said that the influence of europe leads into you know to prakhat agarwala's plays um and and you know in so many ways he's almost a visionary right we could almost yes. because i remember you know growing up on on um you know i remember uh, knowing juti prakhat agarwala through his music right like yes. i i remember you know uh songs i remember ture mure alokore jatra you know uh, things like yes. those i I, I, I didn't even, you know, know that he was a playwright until much, much later. But, you know, there are so many, you know, sort of fields that we tapped into, you know, as the perfect Renaissance man, you know. I mean, yeah. yeah, I was I was very, very impressed, you know. Like, there, are, there are so many fields that he was, you know, involved in. That, and yes. uh, even in... A versatile in, genius. Yes, yes, absolutely. And even in these plays, when you're talking about, you know, um, particular, uh, you know, uh, women who are adhering to convention in a way, but also are deviating, it, remi it reminds me of, you know, the sapphic legend, and, you know, how they, you know, sort of, sort of, you know, um, worked around conventions. And, you know, uh, I would want you to also talk about how, um, you know, the influence of the West then leads in, and also, um, you know, if, um, female characters in such plays also display immoral or erotic sentiments um, as opposed to conventional writings of the era, especially since we're considering the Assamese society and so forth. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, uh, I understand this question to have two parts. Firstly, of course, a bit on the European influence, uh, if it was, but we have to also, um, yes, uh, and the second would be uh, some kind of uh, amorous or you know, sentiments are uh, being uh, depicted or weaved into the plays. Let me just touch upon the first. Uh, one thing, of course, uh, it uh, is widely said, Juti Prahad himself has acknowledged actually uh, the influence of uh, um, Maurice Maeterlinck 
and uh, Henry Gibson in his plays, uh, uh, in his own forwards. But I also see a lot of, uh, I do see some, no, we, I see echoes between George Bernard Shaw and, uh, and uh, Juti Prahad Agarwala in his plays uh, in two ways. And, and first is something that I find very fascinating is the extensive stage directions. It is not exactly within the purview of a discussion, but I'll just touch upon it because I feel it's important. Uh, the stage directions. Uh, if we look at, uh, if we uh, explore uh, George Bernard Shaw's plays, we find extensive stage directions in his plays where, uh, where uh, no, the, the stage directions are at times even uh, run, a, they are like a running commentary at times on what is going on you know, in, in, the, in the play on the stage. We find direct, elaborate stage directions in Juti Prahad Agarwala's plays. In fact, in Lobhita, uh, there is one scene which is comprised only of stage directions. There's no dialogue. It's, a, it's an entire scene where it is shown how the it uh, basically it's it's a it's a uh, it's a battle scene uh, of uh, of the world war second world war and it's entirely in stage directions now coming to female characters if we look at um, say uh, if we look at gb shaw george bernard shaw we see uh, a character like uh, joan of arc joan of arc yes. for example who uh, who was a young girl who stood against conventions who, uh, who was unafraid and who eventually was burnt at the stake. Yes. And, and who was unafraid of, of she, she, she stood for her convictions and she eventually uh, died at the stake. Now, I'm not saying that this is exactly because of George Bernard Shaw, but we do see uh, in Rupalim, and this is something that I find interesting, we see in the play Rupalim, at the end of the play, after all that Rupalim has gone through, she is kept a prisoner at Monimukta's uh, palace. She manages to ex no she uh, she manages to um, come out of his clutches. Uh, she manages to uh, unscathe it, if I may say, uh, and 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 Monimukta has a change of heart. She returns to her her own people, but everyone suspects her of being polluted, and so. Because of that, uh, the princess uh, who was earlier uh, supposed to marry uh, Moni Mugtha, the Rukmi princess, she is the one who actually she uh, she mobilizes the people and eventually uh, Rupalim is forced to uh, you know be burnt alive. So that that is that is how uh, Rupalim ends. And uh, so I'm not saying that this, that this is the exact. This is something that is. This is something that Juti Prahad might have taken from Shaw or something like that. But what we see are these echoes that we find. That is Jibi Shaw. If we look at a doll's house, Henrik Ibsen's play, a doll's house, for example, uh, uh, um, um, we find what we find is how uh, our the protagonist of a doll's house, uh, yeah. uh, Nora, uh, uh, she. Uh, uh, Nora Helmer, isn't it? She, uh, she, uh, she is. She realizes she's making compromises. She tries to live an ideal life. You know the whole. Um, uh, this is also something that the new woman stands for: breaking the calcified image of womanhood that existed in the 19th century. So uh, she is someone who tries to uh, live out the life of an ideal wife, but eventually uh, she leaves her family at the end of the play. Now, yeah. whether her, her, her decision of leaving her family is justified or not is left open-ended by Ibsen. But what we find is this exercise of choice. So this is the point that uh, I really want to uh, kind of uh, pivot my, uh, you know, my, uh, my discussion around. The fact that in these plays, we find these characters exercising a choice, and so do we find in Juti Prahat plays. It's almost like a continuation of what I was saying a while ago. So, in there are other influences actually uh, also, uh, and and um, like uh, the use of uh, props, the use of uh, stage directions, I said the use of uh, you know even makeup, the use of costumes, but that we will not go into, in Juti Prahat's place. That really shows even the use of, uh, uh, you know, even the use of the stage, the uh, the use of uh, lighting for that matter, is something that we find uh, uh, in Juti Prahat's place. So these were new additions to Asami's drama, 
as in his theater, yeah. so to speak. But coming back to our uh, discussion on gender here, uh, what we find is uh, we find how just as the new woman, uh, uh, like I have said, uh, sought to, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, the new woman was independent in her outlook onto life. The new woman was progressive in her thoughts. The new woman uh, made her own decisions. Uh, she uh, broke away from the, she tried to break, uh, not tried to, she broke away the very stereotyped uh, ideal of the image of womanhood in the 19th yeah. century. So yeah. also we find these characters in this play in their own ways. Of course, uh, we cannot really uh, say that uh, because see the way in which the concept of new woman emerged in Europe is very different from the from the socio cultural circumstances of even early 20th century Assam. Yeah. But the point is that even in their circumstances, even in their uh, even within whatever restrictions these female characters of Jyoti Prahad's plays might have found themselves in, they sought to break those. Walls. They sought to break those boundaries. Uh, Lobhita is an example in you know, and that we can give here. And uh, uh, and another thing that we have to understand is that uh, in Juti Prahad's plays, they are they are heavily dialogue driven, and 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 there's a lot of focus on the uh, the character arc. So that is also a reason why uh, so much of my discussion is pivoted around the characters here. So in Lobhita. For example, uh, if she becomes like uh, a, a, a young maiden who, at the beginning of the place, you know, talks about how oh, uh, there, how uh, Gandhi has said that if we keep persisting in our, uh, if we lay our heads before the before the British, if we keep you know, offering our resistance, eventually one day they will listen to us. From that state to, uh, to a, a girl who chooses eventually to become a nurse of the International Red Cross, and then they are captured actually uh, at the hands of, at the hands of I mean I have already said they are caught in the crossfire between the uh, the uh, the Allied and the Axis forces, and 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 eventually she ends up uh, working on the side of the INA. The, uh, the international army and and the Japanese forces, particularly the international army, and so what we find is here, we find uh, uh, our what we find is uh, sorry uh, what we find is we find here these characters trying to break these walls, and yet they are not someone who are they might def they might defy the societal conventions, but they are not throwing away the societal conventions. So yeah. I would just um, there is a, a, like unfortunately I would like to read out actually a, a small quote a one or two quotes from the play Lobhita, uh, uh, which I have translated to English. So I could not like I said earlier also I could not really make a PPT and stuff. So I'm just going to read out. So there are two instances in the play Lobhita. The first is uh, when, uh, okay, let me give a small background to the play. I guess I have been talking about the play, but let me just give a small background. So Lobhita is a play that is set in the in eastern part of Assam on the frontier side uh, at the time when the Second World War is going on and uh, during one of the air raids. And the freedom movement is, of course, going on during one of the air raids. Lobhita's house is bombed. Like the her look, where she lives, that place is bombed, and and uh, her father passes away. And then Lobita, uh, she becomes uh, all alone, and for some time she lives at the house of the Mozadar of the village because now she is all alone, and and she's you know she's made to live in the house of the Mozadar of the village where she cooks their meals, and what she sees there is how the Mozadar is living a life of relative comfort and luxury, whereas all the other people of the village are suffering in hunger. And then Lobhita has, this is a quote I would like to just quickly read. Uh, this is what uh, Lobhita says. It's in, uh, I'll, uh, do I need to read the Ahomia uh, one and the English one? If you or, want, you can just read the Ahomia one as well. I mean, it really yeah. is. Uh -huh. All right. 
just give me a minute i have the english one at hand actually let me just take you out your phone that also either either yes let me, let me just so these are my own translations these are my translations but uh, they are still in kind of relative draft version so this is act 2 scene 2 that is what so this is act 2 scene 2 and here lobita's father is already no more she has lost her hearth her home and her hearth and she is living in the house of the mozadar and she is shocked to see how the mozadar and his wife they are living in comfort and even the the village headman for that matter the gaon burha so this is what lobita tells she criticizes the village headman and the mozadar what would you know of the sufferings of the people pressed up under the burden of taxes their homes and herds are emptied by selling off their wares for the poisonous opium so opium addiction was uh, one of the social malady uh, social maladies of of uh, of british assam yeah. uh, opium consumption even uh, as you know even in the late 19th century itself and in the early 20th century uh, whenever you know this whole assertion for of uh, the whole nationalistic assertion and this whole movement it did have um the uh, the opium addiction as one of its target points to eradicate because so what lobita sees is how people in the village are becoming destitute under the burden of taxes and then they are all uh, uh, all hungry there is world war going on food is in short supply because of the world war uh, the rationing is in short supply the shopkeepers they are hiding their wares there is a very interesting small character of a marwari trader who uh, who hides all the uh, grocery and 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 items and then he sells them at higher uh, prices so anyway lobita says act to seem to what would you know of the sufferings of the people pressed under the burden of taxes their homes and herds emptied by selling off their wares for the poisonous opium not a piece of cloth on their bare bodies not a morsel in their granary not an alphabet they can read so this is lobita criticizing the fact she's talking about the fact that people are poor they are hungry they are burdened by taxes and they are illiterate so it becomes easy for even small lower level uh, persons of power like the mozadar and the village headman to exploit the people and make them suffer so this is uh, one example of how assertive uh, lobita is in the play another is so this is the other other one that i want to talk about is now lobita after uh, she stays in the mozadar's house she has a fight with the mozadar's wife argument actually she feels her self respect is being uh, uh, dishonored so she leaves that uh, the mozadar's house and she goes out and eventually she stays for some time at the house of an of a gentleman whose name is ilahi baksh so he is a muslim gentleman now in the play lobita has a lover his name is gulab and gulab is a uh, congress volunteer fighting for the indus freedom movement fighting for indus freedom but after lobita stays at the house of ilahi baksh gulab hesitates to take her back because she has lived at the house stayed at the she spent nights and at the house of a muslim gentleman so at that point and she says that my village my family will not be he says that will not be willing to take you back and all that then uh, then lobita actually uh, criticizes gulab and uh, and uh, okay let me read this in ahomia actually yeah. um, excuse me so she tells she actually rejects gulab basically that is the point so she says so she rejects gulab and says that i will not have you in my life so but the lines are very powerful uh sorry just give me a minute so she says i'm reading ahmed koid sumoy azikali dekalora this is lopita this is um uh, This is Act Three, Scene Three. This is Act Three, Scene Three of the play Lopita. Lopita says to Gulab, "Azikali dekalora, azikali upozi sa khay buliye ne. Akol azikali upozi le, azikali lora hobo nwari. Tumar monto azir dinoto, azir dukuri bosor agor dekar dore. 
So she is telling Gulab that your mind is still. You you cannot claim to be a man, a young man, because you're born now. Yeah, because yeah, your, your mind, mind is still, still twenty still decades way behind, twenty two decades behind. And then she, then she says because he is a, a volunteer of the Indian National Congress, she says Lobita, to me no ko bar azir din or deka bolli. To me to mark me zoki he bolli bhua ni diba. Ji deka or antar or biplob or juice or na he azir din or deka hobo inware. So she is actually calling Gulab a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. so she she's saying that you cannot claim to be a young man of the times if this fire revolution does not fire, you know in your burn in your dead. burn in your heart. Mm -hmm. Rozar onnay, Ainor onnay, Dekhor onnay, Dekhor solitho ka onnay onniyamor karon mukha khomazor honkir to monor manuhor niroporadhi nimakhitor uporad onnay oitta saror biruthe nijor khuk hompod diji dekai thiyo hobole monod bol nai hi azir dekha hobo inware. This means he saying that this young those people who cannot who does not have the courage to stand against the injustice of the society injustice of the times of the law of the land who uh, who cannot stand against the narrow mindedness of society such a person such a person cannot be a young man so he, she calls him burha koka she ridicules him as burha koka so we have to understand this is lobita not only telling gulab this is juti prahat telling the ahomia society Yeah. about being progressive about being so and these are very and there are abundant uh, powerful lines in the play that we find so the your, uh, the question was on uh, european influence on juti prahan what i would say is that yes there are european influences the influence of european theater particularly on juti prahan and he himself acknowledges but this is a domesticated influence if i may say this is not imitation in any way hmm. juti prahat let's not call it domesticated let's call it localized so juti yeah. prahat has localized these influences on him of european theater or western theater and this so in a very localized and that is why juti prahat uh, plays are that is why when we read these plays even if the world view is contemporary and international it does not seem like it seems as if this is an ahomia voice that is that is being ahomia thoughts that are being permeated you know that are being uh, preached in if i may say yeah so that was the uh, the, the the western influence yes uh, and uh, however i have to say that uh, sometime we cannot really say that this particular character of juti prahat is like this particular character of yeah. of 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 uh, another of of, of ibsen for example but it is in the ethos it is in the perspective it is in the very fact that we have females as and these are all females who come across as females of flesh and blood and these are females uh, who are almost all the characters are uh, actually quite socially aware lobita herself is because it's also a play that is set in the 20th century but the other characters are also painfully aware of societal rigidities of societal norms so that is something that we find and uh, also um yeah, so another thing Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes, the second part. Yes, the second part. Uh, when we talk about this, uh, the second is this whole uh, um, amorous, you know, um, um, depictions, not depictions, uh, deliberations, maybe in the play. I've mentioned stage directions a while ago. Let me read a small stage direction from the play Hunit Kumari. Now we have not really touched upon Hunit Kumari much. Hunit Kumari is his first play. Jyoti Prahad wrote this play when he was 14 years old, when he was in his high school. Uh, when he was in, in early stage of high school, he completed the play, but he revised it several times. So, what the play in Ahomia that we have is actually a revised edition of the play. Jyoti Prahad himself revised it. It's a revised edition of the play Jyoti Prahad wrote himself. Interestingly, uh, he had tried translating this play to English. so uh, so as part of my research i translated it mine i will not use but there is a small um, stage direction that i would like to read out 
And that, so now, before I go to that, a, a little bit about Hunit Gori. Now, Hunit Gori is a play that is based on uh, the myth mythical, uh, mythological story of Uha Nirutha. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, it, so uh, Uha is the Hunit Gori, the princess of Hunit, Hunit or Hunitpur. Yeah. And her father is King Ban, Ban Raza, yeah. who is yeah. an Asur king. Huh. And Aniruddha is now, uh, he belongs to the clan of Sri Krishna. So basically he is from the Yadavas. He is a Yadav, he's of the Yadava clan. And uh, uh, King Ban, uh, he afraid that his daughter would be misled or you know, would be lured away by someone. He has her kept in Ognigor. The Ognigor we, we do find in Tezpur in a home, but Ognigor is this is fortress and in the middle of in, inside it, he keeps his daughter well secured. Now, in her dreams, one day, Uha dreams of a handsome youth, which is actually Onirutha. She does not know who he is, but she dreams of this handsome youth. And at the time, actually, uh, Modon and Roti, uh, uh, Modon is also Kandev. So Modon and Roti, they are just waiting to shoot their Cupid's arrows, their arrows on Uha, and then so there is a scene actually in in um, just give me a minute. Uh, there's a scene in. Uh, I'll re I'll read it out. Um, this is. I'll read out the Ahomia in the English both because Duty Prahad has done written both. So uh, let me read the Ahomia. So this is uh, in the early part of the. Of course the. Uh, Act and scene division in the Ahomia version and the English version are not the same by Juti Prahad himself. So I'll just uh, read. So this is a stage direction when, for the first time, um, this is Act um, Act Two, Scene Three, Act Two, Scene Three of Hunit Gori. So okay, so I was saying that. Uh, so one day, uh, Uha in the inside the fortress of Ognigor dreams of Aniruddha, but she does not know who, she, who he is. Then Uha's closest friend is Sitralekha, who is a painter and an artist. Mm -hmm. And Sitralekha has this power of painting. So she paints all the good looking, uh, based on Uha's descriptions, he, she paints all the youths of India, the, the youths of the eminent families and, and, and the princes. And Uha recognizes Aniruddha in Sitralekha's painting. Then Sitralekha takes, she goes to Anirutha's land, she in the disguise of a boy and as a painter. She poses as a painter and then accidentally she, she pretends to accidentally show Anirutha uh, Uha's painting. So when Anirutha sees Uha's painting, he realizes that this is the woman he has been looking forward to. So, so this is, and, and then Onirutha is brought back by Sitralekha to Ognigar. They secretly get married without the knowledge of King Ban. And then they, after eventually King Ban, he comes to know about that. And then there is the Harihar Juddha and all of that. So eventually uh, on, to save Onirutha, Vishnu comes in and to defend uh, King Ban, Lord Shiva comes in. So there is this whole battle between Shiva and Vishnu. But, but in Karing or in sorry, in Hunit Gori, the focal point is the love story between Uha and Aniruddha. So I'll just read this stage direction. Act two, scene three. Aniruddha Sayamurti Osposta Bhave Ulai Ase. So Aniruddha's, so this is Uha dreaming. This is stage direction. Aniruddha Sayamurti Osposta Bhave Ulai Ahe. Lahelahe Aniruddha Murti Hus Posta Hui Jiliki Uthe. Misikiai hahi onirutor sayamutie, Uhaloi ekantomone sai bhuljai. Ebar muk uhar usorolo loijai, ako atorai nie. Uhai tuponit onirutor sayamutik habote, haboti voloijai. So she hugs onirutho in her sleep. Onirutor sayamutie, hahi hahi, palonkot atupati bohi, uhak haboti duri sumakai. Modern or fuller hor duregat porhi. To ponite uha kiba tabex pondonot copiute. On your thoughts, I am multi hahi hahi, 
ukhar falesai atori jai so the stage direction says that ukhai is in her sleep and the um, Jyoti Prakash uses the word phantom, I believe. But uh, the 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 image of Anirudha basically comes in her dreams, and she embraces him, and he kisses her in 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 her in her sleep in her sleep. So the English one is all the same. Sorry, uh, the figure slowly floats near to Usha Uha and floats back again. This is Jyoti Prakash's own translation of Hunit Kumari. Uha moves in her sleep and slowly stretches her arms but smilingly it moves away. Uha now rises into a sitting position without stretched arms. The phantom comes back, comes very near her and embraces her, kisses her slightly and goes away. Uha with open arms tries to lean forward. The phantom comes back, embraces her and gives her a prolonged kiss. So this is the stage direction in mm. the play. You see here, the, so it is not being made a part of the dialogue, but the stage directions are talking about the kiss. And there's inside there is there are others also in the play. I'll just give another uh, small example in the play. Um, after uh, Sitralekha brings uh, Oniruddha to Uha's Uha uh, to Uha's place uh, to Agnigor. When she sees for the first time, this is this is when uh, I'll just take a minute. Uh, no, let me read from the English one. I think I have the English one at hand. Yes, the, okay. Let me read a dialogue from uh, from the play. Okay, I'll just read a dialogue. So after she dreams, after this prolonged kiss. Morning and the and modern and roti have uh, you know uh, push, thrown their uh, shot their arrows of love and they are in love and Uha wakes up and then she says one moment let me feel the soft warm lips arms let me feel the embrace oh my heart my body kiss oh shivering where has it gone mm. so you see Uha is so are you see this is what we see here and afterwards also when I will not read it exactly but afterwards also we see how you know uh, when when uh, Sri Tralakha brings Anirudha back Uha and Anirudha they embrace and they, they there's a prolonged kiss so you see here we have and this is a play that is so so many it's almost uh, almost 100 years old yeah and and we have this, and they are the songs. So anyway, I will uh, you no know, uh, maybe. So uh, so this is the second. This was the second part of your question, isn't it? The yeah. the and there are others also. Uh, I think reading this will take longer time. But then, uh, in in the play Rupalim, when Monimukta approaches Rupalim, uh, you know when uh, Rupalim is trapped in Monimukta's uh, palace, then he keeps praising her beauty. Uh, if I may be allowed, I would like to read a small bit. This is uh, no, uh, um, from Rupalim. Yes, so this is it. Uh, yes. So this is Monimukta in Act Six. Mm -hmm. So in unlike the other plays in Rupalim, we don't really have scene divisions as much. We just have act one, act two, act three, that way. The other plays, the other three plays that I'm talking about, Karengor Ligari, Hunit Kori, and uh, Lopita, they have act and scene division. So here, this is Monimukta talking about Rupalim. And Rupalim is crying at the time. So he says, So Kupanir Barikhare Kumol Hua Antaror Matit, Moi Sah Kori, Mur Bahonar Kotia Pelaboloi Upozukta Homon Hose. So he's saying that. Rupalim is weak. Her, she is where her, no, she is, she is crying. Mm -hmm. Around this time, this is, so in her bosom, in her, in her heart, and when he says, uh, bahonar kotia, so bahona is lust, passion. Yeah. Yeah. So he just wants to just pour his passion onto Rupalim. And these are very, they are very direct. Uh, then, of, in fact, in the same uh, line, in the same act, Monimukta says, ki hundor Rupalim, Kene kumol tair mangho pehibur. Mm. So he's saying how beautiful is her body. Kene gulapor pahir dore nimos tair gar tair gar sa. So her 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 skin is as smooth as the petals of the rose. Mm. And this is Monimukta saying. 
বডেল হিসে হি আস বিকজ দে আর নো হি ইন হি সেজ বিদ্যা ধর সকল সুন্দর প্লে দিস মিউজিক মূর বাসনার রঙা গোলাপ এপাহ এপাহ কই ফুলি উঠক সো হি ইস কনস্টেন্টলি টকিং অবাউট বাসনা ইন ফ্যাক্ট ইন এক সিক্স পার্টিকুলারলি এক ফাইভ এক সিক্স ইস কনস্টেন্টলি টকিং অবাউট মূর বাসনার ইউ নো লেট লেট মাই প্যাশন ব্লজম লাইক আ রোজ ইচ ইউ নো এজ আ রোজ তার তীব্র সুরভীর মাদকতাত মানে মতলিয়া হয়ে রূপালিম দুগুণ সুন্দরী দেখো সো হি ইস সো বি ডাজল বাই রূপালিমস বিউটি এন্ড হি সেজ লেট মাই প্যাশন বার্ন এন্ড ব্লজম লাইক দ্য রোজ এন্ড ইন দিস I can see Rupalim twice as beautiful as she is. In fact, early in the play, when he sees Rupalim for the first time, act, act two, in act two of the play, when uh, Monimukha sees Rupalim for the first time, he tells her grandfather, this beautiful daughter of yours does not belong to the hut. She huh? belongs to the palace. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he wants to possess her. So, so anyway, so these are lines. So, and okay, then, হি সে তার তীব্র সুরভীর মাদকতা মানে মতলিয়া হয়ে রূপালিম দুগুর সুন্দরী দেখো আর মোক আনি দিয়া মিশরি হাসিস সো হি জাস্ট ওয়ান্স টু বি ইন্টক্সিকেটেড এন্ড সো দ্যাট হি ক্যান নো হি তার অল্প সেবন করে সকলকে সপনের মায়াবী কোথালি লো লো যাও হি হি জাস্ট ওয়ান্স টু বেসিকালি হ্যাভ হি ডিজায়ার্স ফিজিক্যাল ইন্টিমেসি উইথ রূপালি সো দে ইজ নো পয়েন্ট ইন দ্য হোল প্লে ওয়ের মনি উঠ ইজ নট ডিজায়ার্স অফ এনি স্পিরিচুয়াল অর ইমোশনাল অর রোমান্টিক এসোসিয়েশন উইথ রূপালি হিজ এন্টায়ার থ্রাস্ট ইজ অন 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 আ ফিজিক্যাল এসোসিয়েশন অর ফিজিক্যাল প্রগজিমিটি বেসিক্যালি ফিজিক্যাল রিলেশনশিপ এন্ড দ্যাট ইজ ওয়াট ইউ এন্ড দেয়ার ইউ নো ইন দেয়ার ইজ এ স্টেজ ডিরেকশন ইন দ্য প্লে আই উইল নট রিড এট আউট দেয়ার ইজ এ স্টেজ ডিরেকশন ইন দ্য প্লে ওয়েন থ্রাইস হি এপ্রোচেস হর রূপালিম স্টেপস ব্যাক এন্ড এট দ্য লাস্ট টাইম হি অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইউ টাচেস হর এন্ড ট্রাইস টু টেক অফ হর ক্লথস দ্যাট ইজ দ্য পয়েন্ট দ্যাট ইজ ওট ইজ ওনলি টিল দেন দ্যাট ইজ শোন এন্ড দেন মনি মুক্ত হ্যাজ এ চেঞ্জ অফ হার্ট সো সো দিস ইজ দিস ইজ আই আই নো টু অ্যান্সার ইউর কোয়েশ্চেন this was uh, what it was there are some songs but i think uh, we will talk about it maybe but, later on yeah. yeah we are a little short on time but uh, i understand it's seven already yes yeah but we can you know maybe talk about uh, a song uh, very briefly okay. and uh, yeah and you yes. know um, how how that also you know has erotic or or amorous undertones and amorous ha 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 sure so there is a song uh, let me take a song from um, Uh, let's take a song from Puneet Kumar. So this is a song that comes in um, Act 2, Scene uh, Act 2, Scene 4. So this is from, this is a song, and uh, of course, uh, there are extensive songs in 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 all of these plays actually and in this song i'll just take one song the short one mm-hmm. the song is amare hokhia akul biakule it's it's a, it is a very famous duty hongit also this is uh, one of uha's friends in this is from punit kumari act 2 scene 6 and this one is this is one of uha's friends singing and this is about uha why because in her dreams she has already seen a young man who is handsome and she is uh, besotted with him and because he is not there uh, around she is sad so the song is this amare okay let me just croon maybe if i may uh, yes, if i please, can please uh, sing it <laughs> thank you i'll just try amare ho kiya akul pe akule Hapunar hahi pi sai Oh, I remember the song. Hapunar hahi pi sai The first two lines talk about Amare hokhiya, uha, she is biakul. She is eager. Mm-hmm. She is biakul, you know, she is eager. She is eager for whom? Because she saw a smile in her dreams. Hap. হপনত কুমরে আহতি আনিলে মতলিয়া সুখী সা খাই হো সরি বিকজ আই জাস্ট ট্রাই মতলিয়া সুখী খাই সো হপনত কুমরে হপনত কুমরে আহুদি আনিলে আহুদি ইজ আ পোশন উইথ ম্যাজিক্যাল পাওয়ার্স So in the dream, so who is the Hapunat Kumar? This is Aniruddha, whom Uha sees in her dreams. 
So Hopunot Kumore Ahudi Anile, and when Uha drank that magic potion in her dreams, she has she is now uh, not insane in a neg in a in a negative way, but she is now beyond her senses. Besotted. Mm -hmm. Besot no, she's besotted, and because she is besotted, she is beyond her. She is literally because Motolia is actually crazy or to be beyond one's senses. Yes. So she's so 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 she is she is totally besmirched. Uh, maybe uh, no, she's totally besotted, and she is totally um, in you know in, in love with Oniruta. Lost to Oniruta, oh. absolutely. So then there are some other lines. I'll just skip them. I'll just come to the last lines. Suma paro honor, juti pai ho kiyar, gate yo vadi hai nai. Ho, gate yo vadi hai nai. So, Suma paro honor. So in her dreams, she is kissed. So because of being, no, Suma paro, Suma is kissed, of course. So Suma paro honor juti pai. So, Uha has tasted the kiss in her dreams. So now, therefore, she is she uh, she is, has lost gate uwadi nai uwadi is to lose all sense of direction. So she has almost lost all sense of direction, not in the literal sense. So it is just a reaffirmation of the fact that she is kind of she is totally um, she's totally uh, in in in. Uh, in uh, deeply in love with and you know, with uh, with Onirutha. So this is just one example. And then there's another song which is um, uh, okay, we will not have time, I guess. But there's there are so many other songs that where we can talk about. You know, there's these kind of things. So uh, um, then um, then in, in in all the plays for that matter, in Rupalim also we have. Then there's another very famous song of Juti Prahad called Rupoh Kuor or Suma Parohonote, Lajuki Kuori Morohi Jai. Mm. So it's like, so it's like, uh, Rupoh Kuor or Suma Parohonote, Lajuki Kuori Morohi Jai. Again, the prince so well. Has, thank you. But uh, like just just uh, no uh, so so at the Rupoh Kumar, the prince of beauty has kissed mm -hmm. the beauty the maiden and at that the shy and bashful maiden Lajuki Kumori Morohi Zai the Morohi Jua is actually to wilt or wither but here it is not exactly to wither but it is like when in you know, a se lajuki lota so when the lajuki yeah, lota is withdraw yeah withdraw yeah. so yeah. this is the withdrawal that is being talked about this is not this is the withdrawal because he say rupoh kumore suma dile suma hani le he gane lajuki kumori mane morohi gol ekebare lajuki lota tor dore morohi gol so these are actually and there are so many other you know, we uh, we can have an entire discussion on songs because <laughs> they are very, very uh, reflective of uh, Juti Prahad's major themes, the theme, major themes of Juti Prahad's plays. They're also very patriotic songs, but you no, know, in the context of our discussion here. And there are so many other songs that we can talk about. So anyway, I hope this, uh, you know, Prajita, this uh, answered your questions. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And um, I'm, I'm really sorry, we can't, I mean, we can't do more. I mean, I'm really like, I'm, uh, looking forward to the next question and, and so forth as well. But um, this has been absolutely lovely. Like I said, you know, I, I, so I'm sitting by this, you know, by, by my couch and there's a bed here and, and there used to be a harmonium and there used to be this particular song, you know, and I, I went back, you know, went back to like all those years ago when I used to sing this and I used to be like, what is the meaning of this? I don't know what this um, means. Yeah, yes. you know, I mean, my parents are like, it's to Goa, it's a Huna Ba, and I'm like, are so now, you know, it comes full circle. Now I, you know, get to hear it from you and I understand what it means. It's just yes, yes. so beautiful. Um, thank you so, so thank much. You. Uh, thank you, uh, Rajita. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was good um, talking, actually. It, it like really I said was. yesterday, we are going, just going to kind of chit chat and... and, and uh, Basically, yeah, so. we did that. But you sing so well, so well. Thank you so um, much. I'm pretty rusted, but I guess... It, it, Come, 
but uh, this has been lovely and i really hope we can you know connect again and you know talk about talk more about this and other topics and uh, on behalf of anna jory i would really love to you know thank uh, love thank you for all you know the information um the songs this lovely session that you've you know had with us and um, we really hope to see you again sometime soon thank you prajita thank you so much and uh, thank you anna jory uh, once again uh, i had a good time also and uh, yes uh, well there is always so much more to discuss about but it, it's not only juti prahar but there's always so much more to discuss about uh, about and is if uh, if things work out we can always sit for another mm-hmm. session yes so, absolutely physical virtual whatever and thank you kashmira because kashmira was the one who was actually she she approached me for the first time when we spoke and it's been some months also but uh, thank you thank you uh, anajuri once again thank you blessing for joining us briefly um with this um I, we would uh, like to conclude the session and um yeah we'll see you again soon um uh, in a few weeks and stay tuned for more information bye bye stuti bye 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 see you absolutely thank you so much bye bye bye